All right, we are ready to get underway here at Minute Maid Park. The roof is open. It's a, it's a great weather day as well. Mid 60s, light wind here is Vanderbilt Commodores. Lefty on lefty here. Goes your ground ball. Harold Cole will handle that. A quick top of the first inning for Antoine Jean and the U of H Cougars. I think just under 25,000 were here for Texas and LSU. Great rivalry there and future conference rivals as well in the SEC. Yeah, and it's a, it's a real treat for a college player to play in that kind of atmosphere. Swing and a miss, another strikeout. And that'll end it here in the first inning. A couple of strikeouts for Bryce Cunningham. All right, here's the lineup here today. Day two of the Astros Foundation College Classic. You see around the country, it's been steady. A lot of great programs have made their way through here. Leading this Commodores program for 22 years now. It's a well-struck ball to center field. Backtracking there. Near the warning track is Cameron Nickens stays on it and hauls it in. Well struck off the glove there of Jaden Davis in the right field. And Ace Reese played for the Razorbacks last season, in fact. Line drive left field, that'll fall in front of Troy Leneve. And the Cougars have something going here with two outs in the second inning. Here's the one-two coming up from Cunningham to Nickens. Swung on, fly ball right field, that'll hang up there. In right for out number three, Matthew Polk underneath that for Vanderbilt. Seems like this ballpark has been the center of the baseball universe for about a decade now. First pitch to Matthew Polk, well struck. And that is out of here. That one got out quickly from Matthew Polk, who was inserted into this Vanderbilt lineup about 30 minutes before first pitch. And boy, does he deliver. It's funny how that happens sometimes. You don't think you're playing, and then all of a sudden you're added to the lineup late. And for Matthew Polk, you might as well get out there and swing. Jumps all over a first pitch fastball, puts it into the Crawford boxes. Sometimes not over preparing is the best thing that a hitter can do. Just go out there, see the ball, and try to hit it. Take a look at that swing again from Polk. Come on, Johnny. Ace Reese took a look at that one and had no chance as that one sailed out for the home run. They didn't fare there. The new game plan second time through. Line drive into center field. That'll be the third hit of the game for Vanderbilt. Well struck there by R.J. Austin. Well, you've earned the confidence of a coach like Coach Corbin to be out there. That says a lot right there. And another stolen base. For R.J. Austin, off-speed pitch, give himself a little extra time. Ground ball to Harold Cole, over to Justin Murray. And Antoine Jean gets out of it here in the third inning. It had to be 25 degrees in this <laughs> building. It was cold. You layer up, huh? Best you can. Strike out there from Cunningham on Jonathan French. Four trips for the Commodores. Called third strike there. Reynas didn't like it. And he'll walk slowly back to the dugout. And that is strikeout number four early here for Cunningham. In college baseball, and it's also the success in developing talent and putting them into the big leagues. Big swing from Alex Lopez. Is it going to stay in? It will. At first glance, I thought that had a shot of leaving a yard in right field, but it stays in. And Matthew Polk. It couldn't absolutely. be more perfect. It's a great time slot or slot on that schedule. Is the John picks up the strikeout of Alan Espinal. Trying to get his bat going this season. Enter today hitting 229. And a stroke like that will give you some confidence. Line drive in the left field. And the one out single for Davis Diaz. Tomorrow, Vanderbilt plays Texas. That'll be the opening game Sunday here at Minute Maid Park. To try to steal the strike, but it'll also put you away with that changeup. Sharply hit. Stays fair. Diaz to third, a stand-up double for Calvin Hewitt here with two outs in the fourth inning. All right, ball four from Schmidt, so Matthew Polk will head down to first base, and the bases are loaded. Diaz, Hewitt, and Polk. Mound. Eight RBIs, looking for more here. Swung on, popped up in the infield. 
Errol Cole calls everybody off underneath it and Schmidt gets out of it. Swing and a miss, another strikeout for Cunningham. Reaching out just about as far as he can, still can't put the barrel on it. Check swing. Cunningham's got a hurry over to first base. Trey Jones is safe there at first base. He hustles back. Actually, they're going to rule him out right there. I hate this rule. Yeah. We see it all the time. It's it's Take the glove of R.J. Austin. I, I don't know that there was any actual contact. Yeah, here's the replay again here on the throw from Cunningham. He's obviously inside. He's going to be called out. Yeah. That's that's just the way it is. He was a, about a step and a half inside there. Yeah. Tough, though. It, it's it's quality teams coming in every weekend. And as takes ball four, he'll trot down to first base. Two and two, swing and a miss. And strikeout number six for Cunningham. He's really got to find that release point out front, not just with the fastball, but maybe maybe use the breaking ball. Every once in a while when you can't find that release point, there's more to it than just go run. R.J. Austin on the move. French not in time at second base. Second okay. stolen base of the ball game for okay. R.J. Austin. Swung on. That one's going to fall into center field for a base hit. Here comes R.J. Austin rounding third in easily for the second run of the game for Vanderbilt. RBI single for the freshman Camden Cordial. And it's a 2-0 lead for Vandy. At the top of the strike zone. That sails over the head of Jonathan French. Really nice lineup tomorrow. You got Texas and Vanderbilt to open it up. Toss down to first base. And the big out right there to get out of it. Getting a swing and miss on a hitter that's kind of guessing off of him. Well struck. And that's going to go over the wall into the Crawford boxes. And he will take the try. That's Cameron Nichols. The left fielder, Troy Leneve, made a run for it there at the warning track. Just over and into the Crawford boxes for the solo home run. That was the pitch that Cam Nickens was looking for. He was real aggressive on the first pitch. Didn't get the fastball then he, that he wanted. There he gets a fastball that is up but stays out over the plate enough to pull the hands in. And we've seen a lot of first row homers into that Crawford boxes over the year. This wasn't even a first row. This hit the railing and then went into the first row. Make it seven right there. Another strikeout for the big right hander on the cutter. Cunningham now who's at 70 pitches. That's number 71. That's got good carry to the warning track. But Matthew Polk pulls it in for Vanderbilt out number three lined out to center. He struck it well both at bats so far. Low dribbler to second base. Cole's got to hurry. Not in time. Harold Cole did his best to shuffle it over there to Justin Murray. That's the sixth hit of the contest for the Commodores. That one's going to go to the left field corner. Matthew Polk continues his big day. And here comes Hewitt rounding third. And not in time at home. Hewitt scores easily. And it's a stand up double for Matthew Polk. Matthew Polk was inserted into the lineup right before this game, but it's a good thing that Tim Corbin did because he has done nothing but hit since he's been put into this lineup about 30 minutes before, and he hasn't waited around to do it either. As soon as he sees something that he likes, he's put a good swing on it. He was 0 for 2 so far today. Lays down the bunt. Play at first base. They get the out, but Polk advances. Struggled with some control issues. And now... Calametto ground ball third base play at the plate and Matthew Polk is out well done there by Alex Lopez fielded cleanly and then fired to home plate to Jonathan French who put the tag Polk was going as soon as that ball was hit and what you're trying to do there is you're trying to create a do or die type scenario for the defense Alex Lopez up to the challenge threw a strike home and got the runner easily here's the play again at the plate Brent well the throw beats Polk, but the tag was up high on the chest area. So there was about, I think it's a review of was his foot in before the tag was made. 
You know that left foot might be in before that tag was applied by French. Getting it on top of the plate or kicking through the catcher's leg to get it onto home plate. RBI double. Swung on center field. It's going to hang up there for Cameron Nickens. Underneath that, out number three. Called strike three on Alex Lopez. Not only three hits. Nothing can compare with that. Well struck in the left field. Base hit for Kenneth Jimenez. Here with two outs. So the Cougars got something going on now here in the sixth inning. And keep things moving quickly. Swing and a miss. McIlvain comes in and gets the big strikeout of Ace Reese. And the Cougars leave two on. These guys now have been playing with these pieces of technology on them for years. I think about it, and if I was trying to go out there and play right now, his pitch count is probably a pretty firm number. They're not going to be willing to push him past whatever number that is. 6-4-3, double play. Rain is to Cole over to Murray. Well struck there by Cole. Into the left field corner, off the wall there in left field. And it will be a double to lead off the seventh inning for Harold Cole. Cameron Nickens, he homered in the fifth inning. Well struck to right field. What a catch by Polk in right field. Crashes into the right field wall. Shake it up a little bit. Fires back in. What a play there in right field by Polk. Polk is doing it on both sides of the ball today. We talked about the, the offense that he's put up, but that is an absolute rocket by Cam Nickens, not just doing his job, but making a bid for extra bases there. And Polk gets a good read as that ball starts to fade on him a little bit. He turns he turns into it and Here in downtown Houston. <laughs> Called third strike, McIlvain. Little four seamer at 92 on that one. Pretty easy, but after that, get into the weights a little bit and then onto the field. Grab ball up the middle, fielded cleanly there by Jaden Davis and over to RJ Austin. Yeah, Calvin Hewitt has a couple of hits, lays that one down nicely. No play at first base. Good speed there by Calvin Hewitt. On the run is Hewitt. Throw is going to be in time, and they got him. Jonathan French. Homer back in the third to put him up 1 nothing. but right there, Solis gets the strikeout. Change up there from Cyber, and DeJesus down on strikes. Slider not breaking as much as it was supposed to. The problem was is that it backed up too much and turned into a decent pitch on his hands. First swing to Trey Jones had to hurry that made the tag just in time to get him at first base. Well played there by R.J. Austin on that slow roller. Baseball played down there on the high school level every year. Nice change up there to get the strikeout. So lease. Sharply hit into center field. That'll go for a base hit. Ninth hit of the contest for the Commodores. And the first of the day for Jaden Davis. 20 pitches so far for Solis. Another soft liner that'll fall as well. Davis to third. First and third, two outs here in the ninth for Vanderbilt. That put Vanderbilt up six to three. And Solis, job well done by the freshman. Bryce Cunningham was great. Put him, put the team in a really good position to just go right to the back of the bullpen today. Nice work there at third base by Davis Diaz. And Vanderbilt again has the early start tomorrow. 11.05 and a showdown with the Texas Longhorns. Reese pops it up. Shallow left field. Jacob Humphrey. Cole had a single back of the second inning and a double in the seventh. So he's had a good day at the plate. Well struck to center, but that's going to hold up for Calvin Ewan, and that is the final out in this one here this afternoon.